Hey guys, welcome back to another video. For those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Victor and I graduated with a mechanical engineering degree from Boston University in 2016. After graduating, I packed up my bags and left the States to pursue my master's degree in mechanical engineering from one of the top engineering schools in the world, aka Tsinghua University, aka the MIT of China. Just to give you guys some background, Tsinghua University was ranked number one on US news as the best school for engineering. So now you guys might be wondering what kind of courses I took, what were my grades like, and if I even ended up graduating. I'm gonna be talking about all of that and more and show you my entire transcript in this video. This is going to paint a crystal clear picture for any of you who are wondering what engineering and grad school is like at a top university and what to expect out of a master's degree in engineering. If that sounds good, please don't forget to subscribe and like. Your support really goes a long way in boosting the performance of this video. Without further ado, let's get the ball rolling. So fall of 2016, I took a total of five courses. Although this was a two year program, I had to finish all of the coursework within the first year and spend the entire second year doing experiments and spitting in front of a computer all day writing my thesis. We were also required to publish a paper in an international journal. So things were pretty hectic as you probably can imagine. And there was very little time to fuck around. The first course I took was vehicle control engineering. In this course, we learned about all of the different types of feedback control systems used in autonomous vehicles such as PID, sliding mode, and model predictive control. And we learned how to design all of these things in Simulink, which is a MATLAB based graphical programming environment for modeling and simulating dynamical systems. The calculus and linear algebra were a bit too much for my liking, but luckily I ended up getting a B plus. The second course I took was Fundamentals of Lightweight Design. In this course, we learn about beam theory, solid mechanics, and structural optimization using constraints and abacus. This course was pretty chill and the final grade I got was a B plus. The knowledge I gained from this course also helped me to land my first full-time job after graduation. The third course I took was Automotive Engineering 1. This course served to introduce vehicle dynamics in the longitudinal, lateral, and vertical directions. And for all intents and purposes, this was just a mechanics class specifically related to vehicles, and I ended up getting a B plus. The fourth course I took was elementary Chinese, which was mandatory for all international students. I remember this was an 8 a.m. class, and being the lazy ass that I was, I had no motivation whatsoever to wake up that early, but skipping class in China is a huge no-no. So I basically sat in the back of the class and slept through every lecture, and God knows how I still ended up getting an A. Now the next course was by far the most intense out of all of my courses that semester. So I'll give you guys five seconds to prepare yourselves for this one. Swimming for graduate students. I'm just joshing with you. This course was a breeze and I only took it because we were required to take a physical education course. I remember we got to choose between roughly 20 sports like basketball, badminton, ping pong, volleyball, or tennis. And because I didn't know how to swim, I said, why not? <laughs> I still don't know how to swim, which I don't want to talk about, but whatever, it was still a really fun class. In the spring of 2017, I started my second semester of grad school. The first course I took was numerical analysis, which was exceptionally challenging. And it was basically linear algebra on steroids. We learned a lot of iterative methods for solving linear systems, such as gauss jordan elimination, Jacobi, and successive over-relaxation, and how to solve linear least square problems. Because I had almost failed linear algebra in university, I knew I had to prove myself, and I ended up getting a B plus, which was the highest grade in the class. The third class I took was Chinese philosophy, which was another mandatory elective. We learned about all of the different traditional Chinese philosophers, like Confucius, Mencius, Lao Tzu, Mo Tzu, Zhuang Tzu, Xun Tzu, and Han Fei Tzu. Try saying that 10 times fast. We had to write a total of five essays in this class, all of which I BS'd, and I ended up getting an A minus, some way, somehow. The fourth class I took was Automotive Engineering 2, which was a continuation of Automotive Engineering 1, and where we continue learning about vehicle dynamics. 
The math was slightly more challenging and the professor was a lot more inept at teaching so I ended up getting a B-. We also got to do several cool labs such as making sharp turns in a car outside of our department's parking lot to study the steady state cornering behavior and performance of the vehicle. The fourth course I took was Internal Combustion Engines 2, where we learned about the physics and mechanics behind a combustion process in both gasoline and diesel engines, as well as special combustion processes such as homogeneous charged compression and ignition. My final grade was a C+, which is good enough for me, because honestly, who gives a shit about combustion engines? <sighs> The last course I took was Automotive Crash Safety, which covered things like crash mechanics, impact mechanics, vehicle safety, and occupant restraint systems. My thesis advisor was the professor for this class, so I ended up putting lots of time and effort into the homeworks and projects, which ended up getting me a B+. Overall, this was a very unique course, and one of the very few courses where I actually didn't snooze often or look at my phone every 10 seconds. All right, that was two years of my graduate engineering classes and grades in a nutshell, and some of the things you might expect to see as a graduate student studying engineering. If you are new to engineering and would like to pursue engineering in college, go ahead and click into this video where I talk about all of the courses I took and all of the grades I got in university as an engineering student. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and comment if you haven't already done so. And thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace.